Hi everybody, I shot a waitress and I wanted to tell you the story because it was completely avoidable and I wanna make sure something like this never happens again. Um, I'm trying to start doing little intros like that because I've noticed when we when there's an intro, this happens, viewership goes up, right? And that's what we want. Um, up! <laughs> so the story, I have a friend, hard to believe, right? <laughs> um, I have a friend who we sort of a while ago came up with this far-fetched fantasy that we were going to try to go to brunch every Sunday, which obviously didn't end up happening because we're both adults and we have crazy schedules. But this past Sunday, the planets all aligned properly and we decided to go. He actually decided to give a shit about me for once and hang out with me. So thanks a lot. Nobel Peace Prize to this jackass. Um... So we, we always went to the same place every time. I don't want to say the name of the place for reasons that will become clear, but it's, it ticks all my boxes. It has a nice outdoor ambiance, outdoor dining space, which in LA, take a look out there. See that blue sky, green trees every day. So it's a crime if you don't sit outside and enjoy it, because then you might as well live in Buffalo. Um, so we, so it has a nice outdoor space and it has decent food, you know, and bottomless mimosas. So that's probably the number one thing on my list. Check. So it's a no brainer. And so we, we go to the place. We got there around 10, 10 AM, you know, it's Sunday. So it's Sunday brunch. So I'm expecting kind of a I'm expecting you to be kind of busy, but we go up. To, I go up to the hostess and I say, "We, hello, sweetie. We want to do two for brunch. Um, outside, and we will be doing bottomless mimosas. So get those ready." <laughs> um, and she says, "We okay. That's going to be probably an hour and a half." So I open carry because that's my right, and I have it. Actually, it's, that's my left. <laughs> so I have it on my, because I have it on my left side, is the joke. So I, what I'll do is I'll do this move where I sort of act like I'm crossing my, I'm put, I can't do it with a car very well, but I do like this kind of thing, where I put my hands on my hips like this, and then when I do that, I flip open my shirt like this, and then the, the, the holster, the gun is in the holster. I don't have it right now, but because of what I'm about to tell you about, but, um... That's normally what I'll, I'll do that. So I did that with the hostess and I said, mm, man, you know, trying to draw attention to it. And I was like, dang, that's really a shame. Um, are you sure that it's an hour and a half? Are you sure? Because I used to be a host. And let me tell you, anytime a host tells you an amount of time, it has been pulled straight out of their ass. I promise. Because... I don't think I said a single number at any point during the time that I was a host at a restaurant for a year that was in any way based in any kind of reality. It was completely based on my mood, how much I liked the person who was asking me, how much I felt like working, how annoyed I was with the person who was standing in front of me, all of these things. And sometimes I just would make stuff up because I didn't have any information. I would walk in, you know, I'm hung over as hell, and uh, this person walks up to me and I'm like, I don't know, 45 minutes. Who the, who, who the hell knows? So I know, you know, you just got to kind of press them a little bit and then, they'll, and then they'll maybe make it happen for you. I've noticed that in a lot of times people make the mistake of in customer service situations, they will be mean, not mean. They will be assertive enough to be annoying, but not enough to make the person genuinely afraid of them. So you've got to take it all the way. And of course, you're not going to do anything. But it, but it's, but what I'm saying is that if you fall into the if okay, you can you can either do nothing, or you can be pushy, and then you go into the ravine of the valley of being annoying. But if you are more mean, not mean. But, you know, if you're more assertive, then you come back up because you become scary. So that's where you want to be. That's the sweet spot. You want to scare them enough that they actually do what 
what you want. Um, so I was, you know, I'm trying to kind of puff my chest and, and I'm going to say, are you sure it's going to be an hour and a half? And she says, well, what we can do is if you want to do first available, basically, if you want to sit inside, then I can probably get you in 20 to 30 minutes. Um, not ideal, but I really just want to have a good time. So I say, fine. Immediately, I realized my mistake because the indoor space is horrible. We go down the stairs. It's this, they call it a gastro pub, which is disgusting. It's a disgusting word. It sounds like a, a, a parasitic illness. Um, but that's what they call it. So we go downstairs. Immediately, it's like a swarming beehive of children going like, wah, 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 wah. and I swear, I put my hand on my, let's just say we almost had a, a Sandy Hook situation. <laughs> I'm just joking around. I'm sorry. That was kind of, that was a little over the line. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, basically it was annoying. Um, and I hate children, but I've also noticed in my own experience at home, that after about four drinks, four to six drinks, uh, that all goes away. It silences the screams, both outside and inside, right? In here and out there. Um, so I say, honey, put those bottomless mimosas right in front of me and I'm gonna Give me the, I want bottomless mimosas. Um, so this, I don't know when they changed this, but they did, sorry, I got distracted. But these FedEx trucks bolt down the, it's not just FedEx, it's UPS too. They bolt down these streets and I swear to God, they're gonna hit and kill a kid or something. They're gonna hit me when I'm in the middle of a video. Um, and I know it's because they work hard and they don't ever get any time off and, and uh, they have to pee in a cup or whatever, but something's got to change. You know what somebody should do? Somebody should, and uh, you know, hmm, should I say this or should I not say this? Walk in front of one. Then that way there can be a really famous trial or insurance thing. And then they, that will force the companies to make a change that's needed. Be best if it was a kid. Sorry, I don't know why I'm really fixated on harming children today. Um, okay, so I forgot where I was in the story and I don't want to start over because I already got too far into it. Um, the kids are going like la la la. Oh, I say bring the bottles mimosas. So, I don't know when this place started doing this, but they changed it. It used to be that they would give you cups for everybody and then they would bring the pitcher of the mimosa. But then they changed it so that now they don't bring the pitcher over, they just give you a cup. And it's like a regular drink, only it doesn't cost money to refill it. So you, they'll, they'll give you the mimosa and then the waitress leaves to go jerk off in the broom closet. So then you, of course, it's, it's one sip of a mimosa. So I finish it in five seconds and then the waitress is gone, you know, and I have to wait 20 minutes for the waitress to get back to get another mimosa. So usually what I do is I will, I, the waitress gives me the mimosa and I go like this. I drink the whole thing right in front of her and I say, more please, right now. And I drink it again, more please, drink it again until she, until she refuses to fill it anymore. And most people will go a pretty long time if, especially if you like, what I'll do is I'll make it funny. I'll make a joke out of it, you know, kind of a bit like, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if everybody's laughing and having a good time, then you can get 10 mimosas in a row, you know. I also like to, another reason why that, the way that they started doing it annoys me is because I like to drink as much as possible before the food gets there, because then once you eat, it all goes away. Your drunk completely goes away because then your food gets drunk and not you. So you're just wasting your money if you're if you're eating and then drinking. So you got to drink as much as you can on an empty stomach. A lot of times, what I'll even do is I won't even eat the food. I'll just I'll I'll say, 
can you bring the food and then also a box because I'm just gonna keep drinking and then I'll save the food for later. Um, so that's what I did also this time as I, you know, I, I did my little move where I kept drinking the mimosas and then I would say lady f refill, 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 and then box and then food. Um, I have this all down to a science and if anybody messes with it, then there's gonna be a problem, which there was. So, um, but I, I would say though, everything's still going relatively fine. Nothing has happened that's ruined the experience yet. It sucks having to wait. It sucks having the kids going like la la la, but that's life. So we we uh, my friend finishes eating. Remember, I haven't eaten anything. I put it in the box, so I'm drinking still. Um, and it's time for the check. They're always very very quick with the check. Um, the mimosas. No, that'll take 20 minutes, but the check. Right over. So I say, can we have the check? She brings the check over and you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I've had a lot of mimosas I've lost. If you, if you know how many you've had, you haven't had enough. <laughs> so I kind of just, I say I'll pay, you know, because my friend makes more money than me, but I like to pay anyway to make him feel bad for making more money than me. So I make a big show of paying and I, and I put my card down and I'm like, no, no, you know, let me, I got this. I shut it and I, and I give it to the waitress. Waitress goes over to her thing, whatever she does, sh to shoot up heroin, I guess. Um, and then she comes back with the, you know, the thing. And it was only then because I'm going to write the tip, right? That's the first time I laid eyes on the receipt. So I look at the receipt First off, the mimosas were not bottomless, which she was more than happy to go along with. I, I said, bottomless mimosas, bottomless mimosas. And she she didn't say, yeah, you're right, they are bottomless, but she should have told me that they weren't because it's $6 a mimosa. So that was the strike number one. Strike number two, they have included the gratuity in the itemized receipt. And they have assumed that I want to give them 20%. Because, and, and I'm not, let's just say, we were definitely not at 20% territory with the mimosa incident already. We are, we're at 5% territory right now. Not only that, I go one item further and I see this bullshit that says, Healthcare for staff, $3. And so I say, excuse me, waitress, get over here. What is this? Can you explain, is this a Ponzi scheme? Because it looks to me like, let me explain how a restaurant works to you. This is what I was saying to the waitress. I go in, I eat and I drink food and I pay for the food that I eat and drink, and then I leave. And if you got a nice ass, then I'll give you a good tip. So what is all this other nonsense? What the waitress says, um, this is we add in the gratuity and we add in healthcare. So your your generous donation is what allows us to have healthcare. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not Sweden. I didn't donate to anything. I didn't, I'm not, you know, Bernie Sanders. If the place wants to provide health care for the employees, they should absolutely do that. But that's not my job to pay that. That's the boss's job. So I say, where's your, I want to see the manager. Let's just say this, the, this woman comes over and there's a reason why she's not front of house. Let's just say that. So she walks over. I don't want to be too. She walks over. She was very normal. Physically. Emotionally, she was not normal at all. Because I say, can you explain to me why you stole my money? Because now I'm, I'm doing the calculation in my head. $15 you've stolen from me that I did not agree to pay for. Actually, it's probably like $30 because I didn't agree to pay for all those mimosas. Those were, that was a con job. So I say, I am not, let me explain something to you. I am not paying for this. 
and you can either cry about it or you can suck it up but i'm walking out of this restaurant and if a single dime comes out of my checking account then i'm gonna come back here with an ak-47 and they say well we've already swiped your card so we already have your there's already been a charge taken out on your credit card so again this is the type of i literally said the ak-47 remark which is the that thing like i was saying you've got to go that extra step so that you become scary do not just be annoying okay um so they're trying to think like well maybe we can we can probably give you some cash out of the register or whatever you want i'm like yeah you better give me some cash out of the register um the waitress walks over to the register and the manager goes off to do something. And they're stalling me. I can tell they're stalling me because I, I see the waitress going over to help other customers and doing all sorts of nonsense. The manager just goes back into her hobbit hole. So I'm kind of like sitting there tapping my, my foot. And and eventually I go up to the I go up to the other table that the waitress is at. And I'm like, First, I address the table. I'm, it's this family and children, of course. So I'm like, do you understand that this woman stole my money? This woman's a thief? And do you understand that this establishment is a, a pyramid scheme? Because that's what's going on. And then the waitress says, sir, she's getting pushy with me now. She says, sir, we need you to sit back down. Sit back down. We have called the police because you threatened to, to you threatened, I don't know if I can say this on the YouTube, I'm trying to be careful. I made that threat earlier. Um, and that which was supposed to be, again, I was not actually gonna do something like that, of course, because I'm, I'm not an incel loser. But um, I said that I was because I wanted to get what I want. And I called her bluff. I said, you're not calling the cops. There's no way. And even if you were, this is L.A., so they're not going to show up. You know, they're probably out fucking getting their dick sucked by hookers on Skid Row. They're not going down here. Um, but I can't leave because I have swiped my card. So I, what I do is, rem please remember this. I'm a veteran, so I have a lot of trauma. I did, I did and saw a lot of things. And this situation right now is bringing up a lot for me. And in the moment, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure that I was crying in this moment. Um, I need you to understand that context before I explain the next part of the story. I did pull out my firearm and I did not point it at the waitress, but I, hmm. This is one of those situations. Do you ever get halfway through a story and then you realize that you might have been wrong? No. No. Because they stole my money. They committed a crime. An active crime was taking place. If somebody... I am allowed to defend myself if there is a crime occurring, happening to me. If somebody tries to break into my house... How? I'm blowing their head off and I'm legally right to do it. These people were stealing my money. They had already stolen my money. They committed credit card fraud. So I had the waitress in a headlock and I, and I was not pointing the gun at her head. I, was, I had the gun and I said, take me over to the register and show me, press the button and refund my brunch, breakfast, lunch. That's what brunch is. Um, and of course now it's a big ordeal because now everybody's screaming and everybody's looking at me and all I wanted to do was have a nice time at brunch, but now this is a whole situation because they wouldn't just let me, because they stole my money. We go over to the register and 
now there's a bunch of people in the restaurant who are like trying to, you know, intervene. And at a certain point, yes, I did point the gun at the waitress's head because I wanted to get people to leave me alone. I wanted to get people to leave me alone because they were not leaving me alone. This whole thing, what people don't seem to understand about this situation is that if everything would have been fine if everybody had just done what I wanted. But, the, but people were resisting me and people were intentionally obstructing me and doing the wrong thing. At every juncture, people had the opportunity to make the decision to do the right thing that would not have led to what happened and they didn't do it. So, the waitress is trying to, I'm, I don't know what even what she was doing on the screen. But at this point, I'm realizing, I'm starting, I'm taking the temperature of the room and I'm realizing that I, that this is going to end up being a lot worse for me than I, than it, I, I might as well just eat the $80 tab because now I am going to be in a whole slew of trouble for this because even though I know that I'm right and I'm sure you all know that I'm right, people don't, out of context, I understand how it sounds. You know, I understand how it seems. Even though I, I was wearing my garb. I was, I was, all right, anyway. So I do the mental math and I say, okay, fine. I'll eat the 80 bucks. Maybe I'll just come back here later. But right now I got to get out of here. My friend was gone. I don't even know where he was at this point. And I didn't care because remember, I'm, I'm like at least 12 mimosas in right now. So everything is kind of like womp, wham, womp, you know. It's like I'm in uh, what, what the Lorax. Everything looks like. Um, and also, that's another thing, too. My lawyer was explaining this to me. Because I was so drunk, there's a little bit less legal culpability for me. Because I thought maybe that I was asleep, honestly. When I was doing all of that, it didn't feel real. It felt like I was in a dream. You ever do something where it feels like you're in a dream and you're like, is this real or not? Um, so I say, you know what? Fine. I re release the waitress and I go to leave. I was going to leave. And this guy, I all of a sudden I hear somebody going like, big fat guy sorry there was nothing it's i'm sorry i don't mean to be like that i shouldn't be fat phobic he was a there's nothing wrong with being so yeah he was fat because there's nothing wrong with it he was a fucking fat ass and that's beautiful and that's great he i hear him go like oh and he comes and he literally jumps on me and tackles me to the ground and i'm like buddy you messed with the wrong mofo so I start tussling with him on the floor. And I do what needs to be done to this man. Um, and I get up and I'm like, am I allowed to leave now? Or does everybody else want to do something, something else? But it's too late because now the cops are here. And so I go back to the waitress. And I say, everybody, everybody you're going to let me leave. Get, let me out of here. Remember, I'm a veteran. I have, I, I'm, I'm, what, the way that the U.S., this country treats people who have served in the military is criminal. If you understood how little they care about our mental health and um, the, 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 they recruit us predatorily and then they don't care about our mental health. So they allow us to do these things and they don't care. Um... So I am uh, Yeah, I'm holding the No, I, because remember there was a crime committed. They stole from me. The waitress stole from me. Oh god. All I wanted to do was to make get the police to let me leave. That's all I wanted. 
they wouldn't let me. And then the rest is history. I should say the waitress did live. Um, apparently she is okay. So that's fine. But overall, this was just one of those things where I really wish that it hadn't had to happen, you know? And it didn't have to. But, and my friend was ex who works at a restaurant was explaining this to me when I told them the story. They said, you know, people um, really get annoyed with tips and, and all of that. And it's totally understandable that you th feel that the boss is being greedy and it's corporate greed that is making you pay for their health care and not the boss. But what you have to understand about restaurants is that they don't really make a lot of money. You know, most of the time when a restaurant opens, they're in the hole for the first couple of years. So they don't make any money for years. Um, and I said, okay, that makes sense. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know really what the solution is. It seems to me like the restaurant industry is just completely shot. Oh, poor choice of words. Um, anyway, yeah, that's the story. I'm sorry, it wasn't pretty. I know it wasn't pretty, but... That's just what happened. And I'm in counseling. I'm getting the help that I need. Um, now I, I try to only drink on the weekends because I wonder if that had some factor. But, you know... You hear that? It's a fucking kid. Perfect way to end this story. Just another spit on my grave. Kick me while I'm down. All right, I gotta go. Thanks for listening to my story. I hope that you didn't. Don't forget to subscribe to my Patreon and because we do have a Discord on there. I saw somebody comment the other day, I wish you had a Discord. I do. You can subscribe to the Patreon for $5 and then you get access to the Discord. And if you subscribe to the Patreon for $20, then I give you behind the scenes footage of my videos. So that's pretty cool, right? Okay, bye-bye.